Hey guys, it is Patrick. And before you dive into this intermediate accounting lesson, I wanted you to know that you can actually download the notes for this section and specifically this lesson that you're about to watch if you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com or you can head over to the description link that's below and I'll put that link to those notes below where you can find them, download them, and print them, and follow along as you watch this lesson. So go do that, and here is your intermediate accounting lesson. All right, in this lesson, we're gonna be covering enhancing characteristics to financial statements. In the last lesson, we talked about kind of the fundamental uh, characteristics that we would expect from financial statements in order to aid external users in their decision-making process. In this lesson, we're gonna take it one step further. So what additional things can we do to make sure that the information that we provide to external users is useful at the end of the day? We call these enhancing characteristics. So let's talk a little bit about these four enhancing characteristics. So it's not just enough just us to rely on the six fundamental components of relevant and faithful representation for good financial statements. There are other things that we can do to make sure that they're definitely more useful than if we did not do these characteristics or do these things. Now, therefore, we've got four enhancing characteristics that we can do to make sure um, or make uh, sure your financial statements are of the best quality as possible. The first one being comparability. The second one being verifiability. The third one is timeliness. And the last one is understandability. The first one here is comparability. This has to do with the idea that we cannot only compare this year's results to last year's but we can also compare one company's financial statements to another. So when we're looking at an income statement, can we compare those income statements with other types of income statements that, for, that are from competitors or different types of companies? And what do we mean by that? Well, we calculate the revenue the same way under the accrual method. We don't have one company use cash and one company use um, accrue, accrual. Also, does each company have cost of goods sold? Now, again, there are variances. There, so we're allowed in this case to have one use FIFO, one for LIFO and still be comparable. So, you know, there are instances where gap allows for a disparity in what one company uses versus another. But overall, there's this comparability standpoint from the ability to be able to compare one financial statement to another or from one year to another. So we wanna make sure that we can do that based on the way or the method we do our accounting. The second one here is verifiability. Verifiability of financial statement is the ability for another accountant to replicate the same work and get substanti substantially similar results. So what verifiability means that if we're all talking the same language, which is accounting, then we should be all be doing pretty much the same. We should all be processing the data very similarly. And because we're processing it very similarly, if the work that I did to prepare these financial statements is X and someone comes in and sits in my chair and redoes it, they should get substantially similar X results. So their financial statement should be very similar to mine. Now, the reason why in this definition it says substantially similar and not exact is because accounting requires professional judgment, meaning that what one accountant believes Gap says we should do, another accountant might look at that same thing and get a little bit of a different interpretation of what Gap says. Now, Who's wrong? Well, maybe nobody's wrong. Maybe both ways that we presented are correct. However, we're kind of in this space where we should be within very close of each other. That's where verifiability comes from. And that's why we say substantially similar results because the expectations we should get for the most part similar results, maybe not exact, 
but very similar. They put this expense into office expense. I put it into office supplies. Uh, they uh, depreciated it using straight line um, mid-month convention and I use half year convention. So um, we get to the same spot, generally speaking, but they might not be exact. So verifiability, can someone else do, their, do my work and still verify that what I did was substantially the right way? Then we have timeliness. So timeliness is the idea that financial statements are issued in a timely fashion to the end of the period. Now, the lag between the end of the period and the release date is an important one. So at the end of the year, so let's just say this uh, calendar year, December 31, end of the year, January 1, we're ready to close the books. However, we can't just close the books in one day and then release financial statements that day. There's usually a lag. Why is there a lag? Well, there's a lag because we still have transactions that still have to be closed out. Maybe we didn't receive an invoice that needs to be in last year, but we won't receive it until this year. So we need to receive the invoice and then backdate it to when it occurred. Uh, there may be instances of revenues that were happening at the very last moment that happened last year, but we didn't really get a full understanding of it until this year. So we need to go back and backdate that revenue. We also need our auditors to come in and audit the financial statement. They take time because they need to evaluate the financial statement to ensure that they're in compliance with GAAP. So that takes time. And so the question is, is how long from the time we a close or from the time at the end of the year to the time that we issue the books. Do we get it out in a fairly appropriate timeline, two, three months, or do we wait one year? Well, one year from now doesn't make sense. It's not useful anymore because we're a whole year later. So timeliness is important to understanding, uh, to be able to enhance the characteristics of the financial statement. We want to be fast, but we don't want to be so fast that we're not doing some of the basic things that we would expect from a public company like auditing their financial statements. And then lastly, here's understandability. This is the idea that the information is written in a way uh, that a person who has a basic knowledge of business can understand. So for instance, when we're looking at financial statement, they need to be a they need to be written in a way that a normal person who has basic knowledge of business can understand the financial statement. So for instance, my dad has a basic understanding of business. He should be able to read it and understand it. My mom, not so much. She doesn't know anything about business. So we wouldn't expect that the financial statements are written for her because she doesn't have that basic knowledge of business. My dad has a basic, and when I mean basic, he literally has a basic understanding of business. He should be able to understand the financial statement. So when we're writing it, we don't wanna put technical jargon in there, but we wanna put enough information to be meaningful and useful to the user, but that user must have this, this basic level of business understanding to be able to read it. They need to know what an income statement is. They might not know all the details of how to put together an income statement, but they need to know how the income statement is. And when you're reporting the income statement, that's the person that should be able to read your income statement. Now, th that's it for the enhancing characteristics. So we got four. But we also need to talk about some cost constraints, which are the other two things that we want to talk about. And instead of putting that in a new lesson, um, which would be very short, I tacked it onto the end of the lesson. So these are constraints to all of the financial statement uh, elements that we've been talking about. So one more here, we've got constraints. These are not enhancing characteristics. These are constraints. So we said that we've got fundamental, uh, we've got uh, three things, and this is that third thing, constraint, okay? So accounts want perfect financial statements for their external users. However, one of the main constraints is cost versus benefit. The cost of providing the information in financial statements must outweigh the cost of providing the information to external users. So we don't necessarily want to provide something that would cost us a lot of money to um, get when it comes from the infra when, we can, when it comes to data that we need to be able to report it. So there's a fine line there. So that is a so that is our that is our last constraint here uh, for 
our uh, characteristics for a financial statement. Well, there is one more and that's materiality, but we kind of talked about materiality already. So enhancing characteristics, these are the things that will enhance the characteristics of financial statements as well as some of the constraints that we have when it comes to cost effectiveness. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. If you enjoy what you saw, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to write something in the comment section below below like, I don't know, what's your favorite superhero? If you are looking for the next intermediate accounting lesson, make sure you click on this button right over here. And if you want to head to my website and see all of the lessons that are available, make sure you head to my website right here. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.